Hi, everyone. My name is Abby Austin. I'm the executive director of the Alaska Airmen, and we are here with one of our 2023 Raffle Pub updates. You know, we like to continuously improve these things with the help of our generous donors. So we have Doug from Tannis Aircraft here today. Tannis has generously donated another one of their preheat systems. They are a longtime supporter of the Alaska Airmen and our raffle. So thank you, Doug, and the team at Tannis. My name is Doug Ebank. I am the president of Tannis Aircraft Products. We are the raffle plane sponsor for the preheat system that is being installed on the 2023 raffle plane. Great. Thank you so much for being here, Doug. We also have another guest with us here today. So we are here with one of our next-gen board members. I hope you will all recognize him. His name is Aris Servalis, and he is a three-time scholarship winner. He's always giving up his time and energy to the airmen, and he uh, became a certified a and not all that long ago. So he's always helping us work on uh, the RAP aircraft. We're so appreciative. Thank you so much, Aris. So we're going to walk through a little bit of the installation today. Thanks, Abby. Uh, we again have donated our four-cylinder SCC'd preheat system for this year's raffle plane. And that is a four-cylinder system that has a threaded element for each cylinder and a pad element for the sump along with the power plug and indicator light. Doug, can you tell us a little bit more about the principles of preheating? I know a lot of our viewers are not from the beautiful wintry north of Alaska or, or Minnesota, where you're from. So can you tell them why it's so important that, that we have a, an installation of a preheater on this airplane? Yeah, I'd love to. The world of Tannis preheat, we coined the phrase aviation safety starts with Tannis preheat. There's many different methods, many different people have come up with ways to heat up their engine. But now going on 50 years ago, Pete Tannis designed and patented the system that basically heats the entire engine in such a way that everything that's above the oil line is heated up warmer than the oil. And if, uh, depending on whatever your ambient temperature is with the addition of an insulated engine cover, basically can cover all the areas of the world that need preheat. So we are getting the cylinders 50 to 60 degrees above ambient and the oil 40 to 50 degrees above ambient without the use of the insulated engine cover. And with the use of an insulated engine cover, you're going to double that time frame or double that output. There are two really defining uh, pictures that we have. One is a graph that shows the temperatures of your cylinders compared to the oil and compared to the ambient temperature. So that, when I say I got the cylinders at the top of the aircraft engine warmer than the oil, that actually shows it. It shows the ramp. We show how we warm up and the time it takes to warm up the engine and how the cylinders are warmer than the oil. And then the difference, uh, so I'll, I'll send you two of those graphs. The one that just shows you that data log overnight. And then the next one is the next morning we put on an insulated engine cover. And now you, then you can see the added benefit of that engine cover where we get double the effect. Uh, as we cut over with the video of Aris on the airplane or when you do that, then you can actually see where we take those temperature readings. You know, we're, we're using right next to the CHD port. So, you know, we're heating by the intake tube and we're taking the temperature measurement of that. And, you know, that way they can see how the threaded elements that are in, e in each cylinder are heating up that cylinder and the aircraft engine and the oil, but the oil is, or the cylinders are always warmer than the oil. So you don't have an issue with that condensation. Doug, how is a TANIS system different than uh, the other preheat systems available out there? Sure. So the difference, the major difference between TANIS and all the other preheat systems is we're a multi-point preheat system. And we are the only system that engineers and designs our elements in such a way that we get the top of the engine or everything above the oil line warmer than the oil. Because all the time, every aircraft engine, whether you're preheating or not, moisture is evaporating out of your oil. 
And when it evaporates, if it finds something that's colder than the oil temp, it's going to condense on it. And that's what really makes us different than everyone else. There is one other multi-point preheat system manufacturer out there, but they do not focus in on getting the top of the engine warmer than the oil. They actually get the oil warmer than the top of the engine. And the other biggest, probably the biggest differentiator is ours is an STC system. Now, granted, if you have an experimental, you don't need a certified uh, air, uh, system and you don't need a certified system in the U.S., but we have so much of our marketplace outside of North America that requires that certification. So we have had the FAA actually look at our system, uh, make us do tests, provide data to the FAA and the ACO that states that this is safe and effective for your aircraft. So that kind of reminds me of a common topic of discussion I would hear a lot in my days selling parts. You brought up condensation. There was always a lot of discussion about best practices for preheating. You know, I would have customers say, I preheated my engine expecting the weather to break and then the clouds didn't clear. Now I can't go fly. Have I done more harm than good? Do I have to make sure right. I go fly after I preheat? That sort of thing. Yeah, that's a great, great point, Abby. The whole world of what happens once we preheat or even when we're not preheating, what happens with that moisture that is in our crankcase? Because when the engine shuts down, after we're done flying, the relative humidity or basically everything between your top of your engine and the oil is 100% relative humidity and maybe 180 degrees because there is blow-by that happens as part of the combustion process. When that all cools down, that moisture condenses, goes on the oil, then drops down below the oil because this uh, oil is lighter than the water, and then it starts the evaporation process. And when you preheat, you accelerate that process. That's why we make such a point of stating we want everything that's above the oil line warmer than the oil because that's a physics constant. You can't have a vapor, a water vapor, condense on something that's warmer than dew point. So the point that you stated, well, I went to preheat and now I can't fly, so I'm going to unplug it. That's why Tannis has designed our system so that it can be left on all the time. So you leave it on until you fly again, where every other system is not designed in such a way that you can leave it on, especially the sump only, which is probably one of the most popular preheating systems other than Tannis in, in Alaska. It, it warms up just the oil, it evaporates that moisture out of the oil, and you're right, it's going to condense on the top of your aircraft engine, the rocker cover, the valves, the cam. And if you fly that day, not a problem or the next day, but if you don't fly now for a week or two, and you do that multiple times throughout the year, you're setting yourself up for an issue. So in theory, I could leave my Tannis system plugged in for weeks all winter. Yep. Yeah, in fact, we plug on the aircraft that we fly, but we plug it in usually when the overnight temperatures start dropping in the 40s. So for, for Minnesota, that's you know a little bit after August, nice. <laughs> but, uh, we do, we start plugging in the aircraft in October and usually don't unplug it until March or April. So I think, you know, going on what we were talking about, you know, the key differentiator for Tannis is that we get every item that's above the oil line. So if ours, if you can kind of put what, where your hand is, where the oil, where the sump is. So everything above that sump is heated up warmer than the sump. And the way we do that heating up, if you want to point to the intake tube uh, install of our threaded element, I can't see it Yeah, right there. So there is one of those threaded elements in each cylinder. So point to that one and then the one in the back. Okay, great. So we know why preheating is so important. Now we can turn it over to RS and you can tell us a little bit about your experience uh, installing it. Have you installed one of these systems before, RS? Yes, this is I'm going on number six, I think, now on the Tannis kits. Uh, last year, it was Rapid Plane being one of them, and of course, this year as well. So, um, 
like Doug was mentioning, it's a pretty simple kit with just uh, the threaded elements and the uh, heating pad with the plug power and with the bracket that they have with attaching the plug, the shore power plug to the uh, oil filler neck, it makes it really easy to do this without having to make custom brackets or drilling holes into firewalls or whatnot. Um, it's a pretty quick install. It goes quicker as you do more of them. Uh, the most time consuming part is probably just routing wires, making sure it looks pretty and doesn't look like just a mess. And that, you know, with all electrical work, that's how that goes. How long does the process take overall? So we tell people two to four hours once the cowl is off. And that's when you've installed them before. So that's the installation time, the curing time of the bonding adhesive is six to eight hours. Mm -hmm. But the install, especially as RS has stated, the, if you've done it before, you know how to lay out the wiring in the engine, whether you're going to follow the ignition leads or follow the baffling that uh, depends on the aircraft and depends on the engine. But two to four hours is our quote answer that it says inside there. Some people it takes 12, some people it takes two. Yeah, I, to I totally agree with that. I think this one I, I'm going to be finishing up at just, uh, just about three hours. I know the first kit that I did took me way longer, but that was mostly just first time installed, didn't have any references to go off of for that particular airplane setup. But this, having done one before and having been showing a lot of the reference pictures for it and seeing how, how it was been done before made it pretty simple to do. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for that. I just want to take a moment here to remind everybody how you can take this airplane home with you. So this, of course, is our 2023 Rackle aircraft. We're going to give it away in May at the Great Alaska Aviation Gathering, and you can buy tickets. Um, anyone can buy tickets. You do not have to be present to win. And for the first time ever, you can buy those tickets online, which is great. You can buy them anywhere, anytime. So you can just go to our website, www.alaskaairmen.org, and you'll see right there on the homepage, there's buttons you can click to access the website and buy tickets. Buy for yourself, buy for friends, buy those tickets. And of course, every raffle ticket you purchase, those funds support our mission to protect, promote, and preserve aviation in Alaska. So not only can you win this incredible airplane, you are supporting a great cause. There are also uh, nine more incredible prizes you can win. Everything from an overnight fly-in fishing package here in Alaska, to some beautiful fine wire spark plugs, a new DJI drone kit, some round trip tickets on Alaska Airlines and a ton more amazing stuff. So make sure you check out our website to get information on all those prizes. You can also still call us. We're here. We're happy to talk to you. We can sell you tickets over the phone like we've always done between eight and five Alaska Standard Time. We're in the office Monday through Friday. You can reach us at 907-245-1251 and we will happily help you out as well. So please help support our mission. We've got some more really great things planned to show you with this incredible airplane. We've got more upgrades coming. So make sure you're following our social media, checking out on the website, and you're subscribed to our newsletter so you can follow all those updates. Thank you again, Doug, for being here. Thank you so much for Tannis' support. We love having you participate in this. Thank you so much, RS, for being here, too, and always supporting our mission. You're the best, RS. We appreciate you. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great day.